Hello everybody, it's Josie here from the Photo Posting Podcast. So glad that you're listening in, hopefully um, for uh, a second time or a third time or a fourth time. So it's really good that you have taken the time to um, stop by. In this episode, I'm having a chat with Mina Coco. She's a Finnish visual artist who lives in France and her work responds to our connections to nature and perhaps those lost connections to the natural world as well. We had an amazing chat about her work, what inspires her um, and also discovered a a very mutual passion for trees. Um, We talk about where we can find out more about her and actually see her work, what's inspired her through um, the pandemic as well. Um, and how we're all interconnected from the small to the vast. So I'd really love you to keep listening in and find out more about Mina. All the details will obviously be in the text for the podcast too. So I'm very excited on this episode to be joined by a photographer who is living in France and her name is Mina Coco. I know I probably haven't pronounced that exactly, Mina, Um, (laughs) (laughs) but I'm very pleased to have you have you here. And it's um, really exciting to have a chat with you about your work. Um, I'd really want to kick off at Mina, the podcast, asking you straight away, what Mm -hmm. is it that motivates you to actually create photographic work? and particularly the work that you're creating relating to nature. What is it that drives you to do that? Okay, thank you very much, Josie, for uh, for inviting me for this uh, podcast. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> and um, yes, to, to answer your question, I think that um, what is the most important thing uh, to express by art for me it is mm-hmm. uh, exactly this relationship um, human beings have uh, or should have or have had with nature and so my work is really has been turned towards this end for the last uh, let's say five years uh, so my work has been dealing with different different aspects of this relationship and I feel that really in the present context, we are, it, this, this subject is getting um, more and more important. And also it has an urgent character, I think. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I really uh, hope to um, raise awareness um, on this uh, subject um, by my artistic work. And is that very much influenced then, Mina, by your, obviously, your own personal experience in relation to connecting with, with nature and the outside world? And obviously, as, as we are all aware, in our current circumstances, um, through the pandemic, um, I think perhaps quite a few people have actually f- rediscovered or reconnected to nature. Is that something that's driving you you found in the last year say has driven you even more through your work then yes uh, very much so yes obviously I think that as you said a lot of people have uh, sort of uh, reconnected or tried to reconnect with nature or felt the need to do that uh, during the uh, or since the pandemic started and um as, as far as my personal experience goes, I think that as a Finnish uh, person, uh, we Finns have a very particular uh, relationship with nature in general. Um, we are very close to nature and we have always been taught um, to respect it. And um, mm-hmm. it's, it's really a source of... Uh, um, um, how would you say um, peace, inner peace yes. and and um, inspiration and um, it's something essential for us I think because we we are surrounded by nature in any case Finland is very scarcely populated country and uh, we have a lot of uh, open wild uh, spaces 
uh, forests, lakes, and so on. And um, people are really used to living in the midst of nature. And I, I spent my my childhood and uh, well until the age of twenty uh, in Finland. So it's certainly something that influences my artwork as well. Uh, I'm I'm it's it's a source of um, uh, inspiration for me. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And do you find now, because you're living in France now, are you in a more, um, are you still in a rural setting or are you in a more urban setting? Where, where, what's sort of your experience now then where you are? Well, in fact, I'm living about 20 kilometres uh, out of Paris, but, okay. but we are still living very near nature. In fact, uh, there's a forest nearby and uh, um, yes, uh, it's, it's uh, sort of a, a mixture between uh, urban life in Paris and uh, because it's not very far away, I can go there in mm -hmm. about 30 minutes, but still we are living uh, nearby the forest. So it's quite a oh, an interesting uh, combination, in fact. And do you find then that um, when you go into a more urban setting that you can actually still, you still notice what we would perhaps perceive as um natural elements so when even though you're in an urban setting finding those moments of of peace because there might be a, a park or trees etc is that something that you that you can you can sort of enjoy wherever you are then yes yes definitely um and i think that a lot of cities are uh, are trying to uh, um put uh, more uh, green spaces uh within the cities and try to um, give opportunities for the inhabitants to enjoy a natural mm -hmm. environment as well. So I think it's very important I, I, I think that people are appreciating it. And me especially, I do, yes. Absolutely. And one of the things that really strikes me about your work, obviously the, the connections and the visual way that you share your connection and through your work, um, and I'm really, really interested in your current project, which is called Fragile. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, but you've said, I think yourself, that that has um, perhaps been informed by previous work. So I wanted to first take you back to, I believe it was 2016, but please say if I'm, if yes. I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. And that was a project called Arbor Essence. Right. Um, yes. Now, I'm going to tell everyone it's 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 about trees and I adore trees so I'm really fascinated by this work but what can you tell me about Arbor Essence then what what drew you to that that project at that time um yes well I think that when I first started uh, with photography uh I what I was dealing a lot with my dual identity because since I'm a I'm a, as I said a, from Finland, I'm Finnish, and I, I live in France. I have lived in France for a long time. Uh, so there is a sort of a, a dual culture. Uh, and that was the first subject I was dealing with uh, in my artwork. Mm -hmm. But quite quickly, in fact, I, I noticed that, well, uh, nature was always um, part of my artwork and more and more present. And so in a way, I, I was taken literally in the forest by my uh, one of my series uh, where where I combined uh, these uh, two uh, cultures and and um, and then I decided that yes this is the or I I, I realized this is, this is that the, the moment to start with um, exploring what is really um, important in fact and what I'm trying to express. Um, uh, finally, in, by my artwork, and mm -hmm. uh, that was the what I call the essence of being. I mm -hmm. was quite influenced by some lectures, like, um, for example, um, a French artist whose name is uh, Fabienne Verdier, who um, um, who has um, uh, been dealing with this uh, th this type of. Uh, um, uh, questioning about the essence of being and influenced a lot by the Asian, uh, by Chinese um, calligraphy. Okay. And um, so uh, after these lectures, I 
I want to try to um, express the, the this essence of being by by approaching trees. And in, in fact, I have a friend who has a, um, a nice, really beautiful garden uh, nearby and uh, with some very old, uh, several hundred year, years old trees. And he said, why don't you come and, and uh, photograph my trees? And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And then it started and this, this project, uh, Arborescence. And um, mm -hmm. so I photographed the trees in this garden for a whole year, so with each season. Oh, wow. And also every time I photograph in the morning and in the evening. So that gave me like eight different uh, approaches, which I then uh, combined. I worked with um, superimposing. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yes, is that the right word? Super yes, yes. yes. yes superimposing um, these images. And, and there was some really interesting and surprising forms that appeared in the in the photographs um, and yes for me it was um, an expression uh, maybe one aspect uh, at least a glimpse of what could be the essence of being and I I was also uh, I also wanted to underline the the fact that this this essence is common uh, between human beings and and these trees in fact I find I found there were very human forms in these trees in fact and um, um, that was the beginning beginning of this work and uh, in a way it still continues today brilliant it, as in as in are you continuing to photograph the same trees in your friend's um, garden or are you are you just it's evolved into into photographing other no it's more um more about uh trying to work and research do research on this what i call the essence of being um but by other means okay. in fact by by other subjects and uh, and um, but it's something that it's underlying my work i think uh ever since and still today today so it's running running mm -hmm. through all, all of your work in, yeah in that sense so sort of that discovery of of what it is to to be yeah yeah okay i mean the the images when i look at them from that series i mean they they have sort of a, an almost magical um sense but they also have you know i see in others there's so almost like a, a watercolor sort of feeling mm -hmm. to them as well yeah. um, so they're very very beautiful images and um i do have a a, a great love for trees so yes yes um, but with this work then so that was sort of back 2016 i know you've been working before that that time but from yeah. that series then in particular, mm -hmm. did it actually, um, I know you've, you've, you've said you, you're, you, you continue to sort of have that theme of, of this essence of being through the work. What, what has that project in a sense then led on to? Um, and how did, um, did it lead on to, an, uh, there's another series that you, you've, you started, I think, last year. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously very much through the, the pandemic um, time, which was is called Be Becoming. Yes. Um, what can you tell me about that one? Uh, yes, well, uh, Becoming is, um, in fact, I was invited uh, to take part in a group show on the theme of growing, growing up. And okay. um, <clears throat> so I um, uh, did this work uh, in relation to this, for this exhibition. And um, since it was about growing up, I felt natural to work with my teenage daughter. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we worked in Finland on this series. And um, it was, first of all, about um, her, let's say, doubts, uh, trying to express mm -hmm. her doubts, her um, questionings, her um, dreams um, um, as, an, as a teenager. And um, yeah. however, um, quite quickly, I, I, ha I felt that I, I, I should also include this relation to nature um, and, um, and try to express the idea of growing up through nature. 
in relation with nature. Are we able to do that? Should we do that? Is it something that is um, good for us? Um, so this this questioning was led me to um, use uh, some other images that I had, um, in fact, worked for another series, which is called uh, Ma, the Ma. I can tell you something about it um, uh, after. Um, but these images were taken, uh, the, um, I isolated some natural elements like um, tree, uh, tree leaves, um, roots, stones, even the sea, and, yeah. and treated them in a very um, um, a pure way, um, in a, or very contrasted way and um, in, in black and white. So these, these images were combined with the the photographs I made, I had made of my daughter, and this is how the series Becoming was born. And really, it questions our uh, relationship with nature once again, but more from the point of view of a, of a young person. Mm. So, so your daughter was quite sort of a, a big influence then in 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 the sort of outcome of this work yes. or these images yeah yes yes uh, yeah we really worked together so it was really interesting that's really that is really lovely mm. and, and is she and is she um what's her sort of experience of nature then as a teenager and and, and sort of yeah being we, involved in this project yeah <laughs> well uh, i think she has um Nature is important for her, I think, and uh, it's also because we go to Finland quite often, at least normally twice a year. Mm -hmm. Well, now with pandemic, once a year. But um, yes, so so she gets she has been in contact with nature a lot, and um, you know, picking blueberries in the forest, mushrooms, and <laughs> and uh, well, yeah, all the things that you do in Finland in uh, in summertime going to oh. swim in a lake and uh, um, things like oh, that yes. and wander yeah. around, um, go, go around, the, uh, enjoy nature in different ways. Yeah. And um, also since we have, um, she has a dog, so she goes quite often to the forest and uh, we go and have walks quite often. Oh, fantastic. So, I have a dog too. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> totally, totally with, with you there. Yeah, so, that's nice. <laughs> get, and even if you don't feel like doing anything, you, you do have to yes, get up and you, go out. You need them, to go, so. so that's quite a good, good, yeah, good thing. It gets you out. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you mentioned there the, the overall sort of project, the MAR, um, and becoming as part of that project then, is that right? And yes. then the others that, is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. In fact, um, this MAR project was um, something... Uh, again, in relation with this essence of being, since I was trying to um, interpret interpret the um, Japanese concept uh, of ma, M-A, uh, okay. which, which means, uh, as far as I've understood, um, it means emptiness, which has a meaning, uh, which is meaningful, emptiness that it's necessary, um, okay. And it's a very different way of uh, looking at um, the, the the idea of emptiness. In fact, I think in uh, uh, whereas we as um, as Western uh, uh, people we don't uh, see emptiness always as being something important. I think mm. it's when there's when there's a blank, it's just a blank. It it, it doesn't necessarily have a have a meaning we just say well it's empty so it doesn't have any meaning um well, we try to fill it maybe yeah do you think on the yeah. contrary we try to fill it right exactly mm. whereas in in uh, japanese culture they um uh, appreciate they they give it um a certain importance um mm. and it was like in um i would say it's like in music when you have the the rhythm is composed is um born also uh, because there are these, um, how do you call it, silence. Yes. Silence in music. So it, it's necessary to have the silence and it is what gives music its rhythm. Uh, so 
I was trying to um, express this idea in, in visual arts in uh, through photography, photography, sorry. And um, uh, this is how the series Mar, Ma was born. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I used some of the images that I uh, didn't, because I had a lot of material, in fact, for my series okay. Ma. Uh, some of the images that I didn't use for Ma, I used them for to, to, to uh, build this series becoming. Okay. Mm. I mean, they're, they're, they're really striking, the, the, the images that you have, um, and particularly under the, 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 the Ma element, where they're very graphic, black and, black and white, really strong um, images there. Um, and, mm -hmm. and that this is all sort of relating then to the others that are here, because I'm, I'm looking at, um, you've got the living and you have rhythms and you have floral. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, living, I'm quite fascinated by because um, that's looking at living organisms and searching for beauty in them. And I think you used a microscope for that. So you've gone, that's something, you know, really looking up close. Yes. But it almost looks like when I look at these images, it almost looks as though... Um, you've got the moon there <laughs> yeah, yeah it has a moon-like effect you're right um yeah the series living was really born uh in the first months of uh, lockdown and the pandemic um uh we were all closed uh and, and had to stay at home for two months mm. in france as, as in many other countries as well and this is um i i wanted to try to find some beauty in this very small organism like like the virus i thought that it's part of the living word world and uh, there must be some beauty in it anyways even though uh, the, the the effects of the pande pandemic were and are uh, very very um difficult to to bear but um so I started to, uh, I took, in fact, uh, um, an image of plant cells that I, um, that I had uh, taken on my microscope and I superimposed this, 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 these plant cells with, uh, again, images of, that I had taken for my Ma series, again, mm -hmm. with different natural elements. And uh, by superimposing this image it gave gave me this moon like effect um and also uh like a magnifying glass in fact that i would yes. put on on the different natural elements to see what is inside and to show that uh, everything is interconnected the smallest yes. things and the very vast and and that's what um I think is interesting and important to mm. realize that everything is interconnected and we as human beings also are interconnected with the smallest living organisms. It is really it's really fascinating to to see these and then hear hear you you talk about them. And I I guess as well around that expression of being interconnected mm. um it, it you know sort of this moment in in time perhaps has, has allowed people um, to maybe examine how their connections to each other and to put things under a microscope like you have even and sort of mm. look at things closely and reevaluate lives life and and going back to our sort of original chat about people connecting finding that reconnection to the natural world as well yes so definitely I, I, I love that sense of um I, I know you can't see me but I'm I keep I'm sort of I'm I'm, I'm creating a, a sort of a globe shape with my hands it's sort of <laughs> <laughs> great I can imagine that <laughs> so I really I, I really sort of can see what, what you've you know the way you've been working with this and and those images are, are really intriguing to me and I I'm going to sort of have a, a a, a good look at them in even more detail i think as well mm -hmm. um, and in fact i had the the very uh, ch the chance to exhibit these online with an english gallery called uh, oh fantastic Tabs contemporary art gallery um 
and uh, run by an artist whose name is uh, Christy Tepps. And uh, that was in January this year, and it was a very interesting um, exhibition online with some uh, other international artists. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And is that, is that now finished, that exhibition? That's finished, or... yes. Uh, okay. But there is still, I think, uh, um, there is an, at least an interview uh, 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 on TEP's um, website, oh, yes, and it, it is also to be found on my uh, website. Uh, Fantastic! Yeah. So we can share all those those details so people can can go yes, and check those out in in, in, uh, in seeing the exhibition and uh, hearing about it. Yes. Fantastic. Um, now, one of your latest series, mm -hmm. I. I mean, I really love this latest series, um, mm -hmm. um, but I guess in a, in a way it's slightly different to some of your other, other work. And when I look at sort of other work, you could say the colours are obviously there's black and white and they're quite soft and gentle colours. And then with your your latest project, um, you can obviously tell us about it in your own words, mm -hmm. but I quite like the way you're working with, with juxtapositions of images and you're using teared paper. So there's sort of this edge within the images as well, sort of like an edgeland between these two different um, locations or experiences that you're sharing. Mm -hmm. What What is it, how would you explain um, your work with Fragile then? Yes, um, it, it's you're right. It's quite different from my previous work um, already because it's um, it's not. I don't work with superimposing images in this series, but instead, I chose to uh, juxtapose them, and um, I needed to because the idea behind fragile is the um, the fact that I feel that um, there has been a split up between human uh, beings mm -hmm. and nature and we are too disconnected from nature and i needed to translate that um, idea by something very tangible and um, a concrete gesture which was mm -hmm. tearing up uh, my my uh, prints yeah and i chose to tear them up to then put them together and and try to show that there, that there is a disconnection but uh, there also is the possibility of of putting things together and i'm i was trying to mm -hmm. and i am trying to because this series is still ongoing now i'm working on it mm -hmm. um it's um i'm trying to put together things that that uh, form uh, uh, together uh, a sort of a harmony um, mm -hmm. oh, there's always an, an element of uh, a natural element, nature, and there is something which has to do with the uh, humankind, either construction, architecture, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, uh, what else? Uh, anything that has to do with uh, uh, our way of um, uh, what we have done, in fact what we have yes. manufactured, yeah. what we have constructed, what we have, yes. what it was the, the, uh, our footprint. Uh, yes, as, the as, stuff as hum of humans. As humans. So, yeah. but always with the idea of trying to find a balance and trying mm -hmm. to show that these things can go together, but we need to reconnect. And yeah, yeah so this, this, this uh, gesture of um, tearing up my prints it's 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 a very concrete way of saying that that there has been a split up but still there is hope so and you can put things back together yes, yes. <laughs> maybe in a different way but maybe in a different can. way yes yeah. certainly a different way and that yeah. that echoes i think with the fact that i don't think we are going to be able to go back to what it was what life was before the pandemic it's not yeah. i don't think we can go back in any, in any, at any level, in fact. So we need to reinvent something new. We need to re, uh, uh, yeah, invent something new, in fact. Yeah, 
Yeah. Absolutely, I agree with you there. Yeah, I think a, a new new ideas, new new sort of ways of being. Um, yes, and looking at the world with with fresh eyes for you know, and and helping others and where help is needed and all of that. It really is, and doing so through. I mean, this leads quite nicely into a question that I try to ask everybody who takes part in the podcast. Um, and that question, no right or wrong answer to it. Mm -hmm. But it does, re it does relate to how you think uh, um, as a photographer, um, how photographers and photographic artists can how our creativity can actually have a positive impact on the natural world. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I think that um, f photographs, uh, can have a very uh, important uh, impact because by our work as a photographic artist, we um, uh, raise we can raise awareness on on what is important, and we can also um, give a new direction to the way we are looking at things and the way we perceive things. Um, so I think artists in general and, and visual artists uh, in particular have an important role in that sense. And um, I would say that uh, at least from my point of view, I think I this is my way of contributing to what needs to be done uh, in, in a, on a global level to save uh to save the planet in fact and uh, mm -hmm. and um yeah so definitely indeed and it's really fabulous to to chat with um artists that are using their their talents to to raise awareness or share stories or just create artwork that perhaps prods people's thinking and makes them maybe, you know, think a different way or look at something differently. Mm. And that is is the joy of um of of art and photographic art. So it's really lovely um to hear that from you as well. Mm. Um now I could carry on chatting with you for ages now. <laughs> um but if people actually wanted to find out about your work and look at your your work themselves, where can they where can they see your work? Website, social media, online galleries, etc. Yes, um, uh, yes, they can um, uh, see what's what uh, what I'm doing on my website. Uh, it's uh, com. So M I double n a k o double k o dot com and uh, my also my instagram account which is uh, at minakoko uh, underscore artists um yes that's mainly my my the things that can be seen on on online and um, I am currently taking part in a group show by um, a collective, uh, um, British collective, uh, who uh, is called Cat Map, Mapped. Okay. Cat Mapped. Cat Mapped. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm taking part in their group show, Jungle with another series uh, of mine, which is called Trial Garden. And so it's currently online and you can, it's a really beautiful show. In fact, I, I, I have discovered a lot of interesting artists around the world with yes. this exhibition. So I was really happy to be part of it, uh, to have been selected. And um, so that's in, on online, catmapped, uh, dot uh, org o o r g o r g, o -R -G. O -R -G. <laughs> and um so that's something that's going on and i am also uh having one of my series my previous series exhibited uh on the website of um, art dog magazine at the moment mm -hmm. so um that's art dog 
artdoc.com uh, slash photo, I think, or exhibitions. I shall put all of those, I shall, I shall make sure all of those links are, are shared in the text for the podcast as well. So we'll, we'll make sure people um, who are listening in can, can have a look at, at all of those because they, you know, they, they sound really, really lovely shows to be a part of. And obviously, um, make sure people can get to you directly through your, your website or, or your Instagram. So yes. I shall, I shall do that for you. Great. Um, well, I've had a really lovely time, Mina, chatting with you. Thank you very much. Um, and is, is there anything, I, I know that you, you told me earlier before we began the podcast that you're, you're on vacation this week. So you off to do anything nice in, in our current circumstances, getting out in nature. Yes, in the forest <laughs> and behind the house. I'm, I'm going there every day and uh, um, also trying to get some work done, um, or some artistic work done and... Uh, uh, in fact, uh, my series Becoming that we were talking about is currently ex mm -hmm. exhibited in uh, Auvers sur Oise, uh, which is a, a city where Vincent mm -hmm. van Gogh finished his life, ah, which is very near okay. nearby here. I, it's about 10 kilometers from where I live. And there's a very beautiful group show, uh, what I was talking about um, uh, earlier gr on growing, on the fact of growing up going on and it has been extended until the 2nd of May but unfortunately it's not open to public so that's too bad but yeah. Uh, yeah. I am currently also um, working on the preparation of a group show with five other uh, very interesting women photographers um, which is going to take place in the same gallery in Auvers sur Oise and uh, it's going to take place from the 15th of May and uh, until the end of June. So if there are any listeners who are around <laughs> this area, <laughs> come. Um, oh, a very uh, interesting show with uh, women pho photo photographers. So... Um, uh, well, do keep me posted if you can, and yes. I can always share it on. If there's any links to that in the future, then we can always share that on for you. And I'll, I'll definitely be keen to have a look myself as well. Yes, great. Um, to, to do like I will. One. But thank you so much, Mina, for taking part. Um, I really appreciate your time, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy the rest of your your break. Thank you very much, Josie, Josie for having having me chat with you. It was really a pleasure and a uh, very important uh, thing for me to be able to speak about my work. So thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope to stay in contact and uh, hope to see you maybe one day as well. <laughs> <laughs> one day. That would be lovely. Yeah. Mina. Thank you. Thank you, Josie. I hope you enjoyed listening in to my conversation with Mina as much as I had having that conversation with Mina. I loved learning about the influence of nature on Mina both personally and artistically and how even when it may seem there is a split or disconnection from nature there is always hope and as Mina said nature is the essence of our being so let's not lose that. You can visit Mina via her Instagram account, which is at MinaCoco underscore artist, or you can visit her at her website, which is MinaCoco.com. And if you would like to take part in the photo posting podcast to share your photographic art in an audio way, visit my website at JosiePurcellPhotography.com. Thanks for listening. Bye.